Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity 3D platformer tutorial series. Now in the last episode we made our player invincible when he takes damage for a short, brief amount of time. And the next thing we want to look at is making the player die when we lose our health. So, for example, if I just go to our game manager here, I'm going to set our max health to 1, just for the purposes of us testing this stuff. And of course at the moment, when we play the game and we run into these cactuses, we see our current health over on the right over there goes down below zero. So obviously we don't want that happening. We want to make it so that when our player dies, uh, or when our player's health goes below zero, that they die and they get reset back to where they started basically. So let's unplay that and we'll open up our health manager script. And basically what we want to do is in our heart player script here, we're going to want to say we're going to want to check and see if our current health goes below zero then we want to respawn the player so we're going to create first of all a function that we're going to call respawn so a public void respawn and in here is what we're going to use to reset the player and stuff like that and we're also going to need a, a value for us to be able to know if we're already respawning because we're essentially going to call this respawn and then if we're already respawning then we don't want to do it again and again so we're going to add a little variable up here that we're going to call uh public well actually this can be a private boo we don't need it to be we don't need to be able to access this public private sorry private bool um is respawning now it might not be obvious uh, straight away why we're doing this, but it'll become a little bit more obvious as we as we go on. And one other thing we want to do is create a private vector tree that we will call respawn point. And that's basically going to be the position that we get our player to reset to when we get hit. Because obviously we don't want them to die and then just respawn at the exact same place they already were. So for our first initial purposes, we're going to set our respawn point to be wherever the player starts within the world. Eventually we'll get to making checkpoints within the game and we will be able to reset our player's respawn point to be whatever the checkpoint is within the world. But for now, we're going to say respawn point, respawn point equals transform dot position. And we put this in our start function so that we know that straight away as soon as the game starts, sorry, I just realized we're setting it to respawn point is transformed opposition. We don't want to set it to be transformed opposition. We want to set it to be the player's transformed opposition. So it'll be here. We should type in the player dot transform dot position. So as soon as the game starts, we set our current health. We get the player. Uh, we're finding the player, although we've explicitly in the last episode, we if we go look at our game manager here, we've actually set the player automatically here in our game manager so for our purposes we should actually really get rid of this line because we actually always want the game manager to know what the player is within our levels so when we start a new level we'll always set in our game manager the player to be referenced here so if we go back in here so we'll ignore that line we know what the player is and we can say okay as soon as the game starts respawn point will be equal to wherever the player is as soon as the game starts okay so we can save that And here is where we're going to see if we're currently able to respawn. So we have our current health minus equals damage. The next thing we want to do is say here, if our current health is less than zero, or sorry, less than or equal to zero, then we're going to do some stuff uh, to respawn our player. Well, essentially all we're going to do is just say, uh, call the respawn function so i'll just add that in here Oop. move down our lap accent respawn and then two brackets to call the function that we just created down here which is our respawn function so it'll just go if our card has below zero then go run whatever code is in here but otherwise if our current health is not below zero we want to do all of this stuff so we'll just say after this bracket we'll just say else put another curly bracket open and then just after all this little bit of code here with our flash counter and everything we put another close bracket so now you'll see if our current health is less than or equal to zero then we'll go and respawn otherwise knock back the player set our invincibility counter all that fun stuff that we wanted to do 
And the reason we put these within here is because we don't want our player, for example, to be knocked back when, they, when they're respawning. Because when we respawn our player, we don't want them to be knocked back from whatever position we respawn them to. So we're, we're going to want to add a little bit of a delay to our player respawning. And we'll get to that in a second. But let's just first of all test out how our very simple and straightforward respawn should work. So we have our respawn function here. Basically, all we're going to do in here is say um, the player dot transform dot position equals our start position or our response position that we saved back up here. So our respawn point. So player dot transform dot position equals respawn point. And of course, the next thing we need to do is reset our health back up to what it. It uh, should start off at so current health equals max health like that okay so we haven't really done too much code here we've added a couple of variables and added a couple of extra little um, if statements in and one little extra function but that will allow us to show our player uh, the, the basics of our player dying so we'll go back into the game let it compile and if we press play here we still have our max health on one so we can just test it quite quickly so we can see our player starts here we run forward and boom we kind of we instantly teleport back to where we started it, it kind of looks like we're um kind of just teleporting around at the moment because obviously the respawn doesn't look that great so we're going to stop this again i'm going to actually move the player uh back a little bit so that we can see kind of the um you can get a, a better sense of the fact that we are actually moving around within the world. Oh, and of course that moves the player much closer to our camera, which uh, 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 kind of changes our setup a little bit. So really, I should not do that. Um, let's just undo both of those things there. There we go. There we go. He's back in position like he should be. Um, when you do stuff, stuff like that, you need to remember uh, changes you make within the game can change how other things operate but you can see if we run into this these cactuses we are getting reset back to our start position okay so that's perfectly fine but what it doesn't look that great that our player is just going pop back to our start position so one very simple way we can make this look a little bit better is by adding a coroutine to make it wait a little bit of time before the player gets reset. Now I'm just going to go back in here into our code. So we're going to use a code routine, but we could also, if you wanted to, you could just do it within your update loop of have a couple of timers counting down when the player gets um, respawned. You could have it counting down for the waiting for a thing to happen. Um, like for example, you could wait a couple of seconds for the player to move back to the position that they should be in. But we don't want to do that. We want to use a coroutine, which will handle all this stuff for us, and we don't have to manually count it down. Now, we haven't used coroutines before, but they're very, very straightforward to use. So what we're going to do is, below where we have our public void respawn, what we're going to do is create a public i enumerator, which is essentially what coroutines are called, that we'll call respawn co. And we're going to put some brackets and we'll put nothing in here for the moment. Now you'll see this comes with like a little red underline saying that this is an error. We, we'll we fix that error in a second, but it's only because we have nothing within our brackets here. So a coroutine is a little bit different than other functions within Unity. So say, for example, with our respawn routine here, or sorry, our respawn function. So when our player gets hurt, if our invincibility is below zero, that's fine then we check and see if our current health is below zero here. So when our current health is below zero, it goes to respawn and it'll do all of this code here. And then it goes back up to the end of respawn and goes on to whatever's next. So actually, no, here's a, here's a, here's a better example. If our current health is above zero, then we go into this little function here. So what gets called here is the player dot knockback direction. So what that does then is it opens, it goes into the player controller script. So it goes over the player controller. We go to the knockback function. It does these little bits of 
code here. And then once that's finished, it goes, okay, I, I've done what it's supposed to do. And it goes back over to the health manager and it goes on to the next line and keeps reading along as we go. Coroutines are a little bit different, however, in that if you call a coroutine, it starts up in its own kind of loop of time outside of Unity. So say, for example, if we were to, if we were to change this into a coroutine, it would go, it would go to here, we'd start the coroutine, that coroutine would basically go off in its own little branch away off to the side. And at the same time, Unity would also go moving on to the rest of this code. So basically, rather than like progressing one after the other, it spits off into its own thing and kind of works in its own time loop. So that's why in here, we need to have kind of a control of time um, for our uh, coroutine to work. So to control how much time this coroutine is going to take, we're going to go back up to the top up here and we're going to create a public float, uh, let's call it respawn length. And we'll go back down here. And then within our coroutine here, we're going to add something called a yield return new weight for seconds. And in a little brackets after that, we're going to put in the value that we just created, which was our respawn length, like that. And we put our semicolon in the end. And basically what this means is we're going to have a little bit of code above it and a little bit of code after it. And we're just going to say, um, do whatever little bit of code we have up here, then wait for however many seconds our respawn length is, and then do a little bit more code. So obviously if we have all this stuff going, we need to actually uh, call this coroutine. Now coroutine is called slightly different than a normal function is. So in our in our normal respawn function here, I'm just going to comment out these little bits. And this is kind of this is kind of standard practice a lot of times is to rather than up here for example call calling um our coroutine straight away from here what we'll actually do is we'll stick with this respawn function we have and then down in here we're going to add the start coroutine check so th there's, there's a kind of an obvious reason for doing this which we'll take a look at in a second but what we'll do here is just say start coroutine and then in brackets we're going to type quotation mark respawn co respawn co being the name of the coroutine we just added down here and then we need to put our little semicolon at the end and this is how you start a, a, a coroutine or sorry an i enumerator coroutine um within unity so that's fine that that will start our little routine but what we want to do within our respawn function here is say just before this say if we are not respawning already. So if not is respawning, then do all of this little bit of code we have here. And we know that back up here, that's why we created our little re is respawning function so that we can check if we're not already respawning, then we're allowed to start the core routine. And then within the core routine, we'll control whether we actually are respawning. So we can say as soon as the core routine starts, then we know is respawning is already false. So we can say, okay, in that case, we'll set is respawning equals true. Then we will wait for however many long, however long we wanted to wait. And at the end, we'll say is respawning equals false. Okay. So that's all fine and dandy. We have that working for us nicely. Basically what'll happen now is as soon as our player goes below zero, we'll go to respawn. And in here, we'll check if we're not already respawning, then start the coroutine. If we are respawning already, then don't do anything. So just in case our player somehow managed to get killed twice at any particular moment, we've, we're have we catching that uh, possibility here. And the reason we do this in here is because it's much more sensible to do the if statement check within a normal function than to do it within our respawn coroutine. Because our respawn coroutine will last for however long this respawn length is. And we don't want to have, 
we don't want to have multiple coroutines starting for no reason. So we don't want to start this coroutine and then add an if statement that goes, oh, if we are not responding, then don't do any of this stuff. Because if we don't do any of that stuff, basically the respawn routine would be going, okay, well, if we don't restart, then how do I know how long to wait? I don't know any of this stuff. And we'll start getting errors that we don't want happening. So we have our respawn happening. The next thing we'll do is, okay, so our player gets killed. First thing we want them to do is make the player disappear. So we can just say the player dot game object dot set active false. So the player is gone from the world. Then we'll wait for however long we want it to wait. And then down here we'll say um, we, we've stopped respawning now. So turn the player dot game object dot set active back to true. And then just as we did when we first set up our respawn function, we want to take these lines of code. So we want to move the player's position to the respawn point and set his current health back to be maximum health. So we'll just copy both of those lines there and put them down here too. And of course, get rid of this little comment line. And one other thing we want to do is make sure that when the player comes back to life, they have that little bit of invincibility that we were giving them whenever they get hit. because. Usually when you come back to life, you want to feel a little bit safe for at least a fraction of a second. So we'll do the exact same thing we have up here, our invincibility counter. We'll set it to invincibility length. We want to make sure the player render is no longer enabled. And we want to set the flash counter, just like we're doing with all the other stuff. So we'll copy that and paste it in there. And I'll just tighten up these lines a bit shorter like that. Okay, so we'll save this. And now if we go back into Unity, let it compile for a second. We press play. We kill ourselves. Oh, well, we're, it's happening immediately because if we go to our game manager, we didn't actually set a respawn length. So let's set this to, say, two seconds. So we die with phases there for a couple of seconds, and then we respawn back at the start. So perfect. That, that's the essential basics of how we can make our player respawn as we go. The next thing we want to do is actually make this respawn look a little bit better. So we're going to mess around with a couple of bits of UI stuff just to make it look nicer and adding a little effect when our player gets killed. So we're going to take a look at doing that in the next episode.